Hi everyone and welcome to this week's little interview. I hope you are all keeping well and enjoyed the interview with Stuart Hogg. Um, today we have Karina Cuthbert or Kaz Cuthbert, who is the current captain of the senior women's hockey team. Um, she's got 164 caps, has represented Scotland at two Commonwealth Games and played numerous Europeans and World Cup qualifiers. Um, so we'll just get stuck in. Hello, Kaz. Hi, Mordy. Or Miss Ward, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, we're just basically wanting to hear a little bit about your kind of school life as such, if you just want to talk generally about that, you know, maybe some of your favourite subjects or favourite teachers and things like that, if you can think back to back to then. Okay. Um, yeah, essentially I started off, uh, well, I'll go from high school uh, in Greenock. Um, I had a real fondness, obviously, for PE and um, being a sporty person. I just like to get out there and play. Um, I didn't even mind the cross country when you're out running around the mucky fields. Um, I found that just being outside was, was better for me than being stuck in the classroom. Um, but I really had a love as well for maths. Um, I liked problem solve and I loved maths because you always got an answer. Um, and even once you got your answer, you could work back to make sure it was the right answer. So um, maths was probably one of my favourite subjects, along with PE. And I dabbled in a little bit of chemistry as well. Um, but yeah, school life at Greenwich Academy was, was good. It was um, nice school, nice friends, um, nice environment to, to uh, be in. And then for my fifth and sixth year, I moved up to the Glasgow School of Sport. Um, so that was a whole different kind of learning lifestyle for me. I used to have to get the train in the morning. It was an hour and a half commute to get to school. Um, I had to make all new friends, meet a whole group with the new teachers and really just try and blend in uh, whilst being part of uh, a specialist sports school as well. So having to disappear uh, during the timetable to go and um, actually to do badminton, which is what I was there to <laughs> uh, to get better at at the time. Um, but yeah, again, uh, I loved just, I suppose that's what's really helped me adapt to changing environments. I'm probably pretty good now if you put me in, in an environment where I've got to chat to people, I'm pretty good at making conversations. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned obviously you were there originally for badminton. Is that correct? So when did you maybe start actually playing hockey, or how did that maybe overlap actually occur to bring you to where you are kind of now? Okay. Um, I used to play all sports when I was younger. My mum was really keen to put us into like anything. I don't know if it was just to get us out the house or <laughs> uh, whether she knew that would actually help us in our sporting kind of career. I think to be fair, she's not that. She. You need to have a, a, you know, a multi-range of skills. And so we used to play everything. And I say we, me and my brother, we used to play everything from tennis to badminton. We used to swim, uh, hockey, golf. I mean, God, I used to have a set of golf clubs as well. Um, so we did it all when we were younger. And then I suppose as we started to get through secondary school, um, I really started to focus on more hockey and badminton as more my, my main sports. Um, my brother, he tended to focus more on hockey and golf, and he dabbled a little bit more in tennis in the summer. Um, so yeah, I actually, throughout most of my, I think it was 14, was the first time I went away and represented Scotland for badminton, um, and under 16s would have been the first time I represented Scotland for hockey. Um, so even when I went to school of sport and I chose to be there to concentrate on my, ho um, my badminton, I was still competing at hockey at an international level. So at that point I was under 18. And um, so I managed to kind of marry them up. Um, they were actually really good to work off each other with the training. So badminton was all about being explosive, reacting, um, you know, just really quick, sharp reactions. And then that took, could take that onto the hockey field. But the hockey field was maybe more about endurance. So I, I probably had one of the highest levels of fitness in the badminton scene you know, and it was really good to kind of cross transfer those skills. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, isn't it? That you can actually use, you know, both the sports to kind of work off each other and you're getting benefits from both and putting into others. And I think that's, you know, a really great lesson that is it's so nice as well to have a wide variety. So that's really interesting to hear. And leading on to that, you mentioned a bit about obviously your brother being doing a bit of hockey, tennis, and I know your mum was a, an internationalist, I think, at hockey, if I got that right. So was there any, you've obviously got sporting genes, but was there anyone else that was like your sporting hero when you were a youngster, or who did you look up to? Um, so obviously, yeah, when I was younger, my mum 
you know, put us into the sport and, and it was good to have my brother. He's older than me. So I suppose I always just wanted to play with him and the older boys. And, and that was always actually really challenging, probably advanced me along a lot quicker than um, maybe other girls of my age. Um, but once I started to really progress, uh, particularly in the hockey world, um, I moved to a club, uh, Gift McCockey Hockey Club, and Rona Simpson was the coach there, and she really was an inspiration. Like she was a, a an Olympian level player, and she just had the mindset and the determination to just be the best. And and I'd say, I mean, I was there for ten years under Rona, and I think that's where I really learned my graft like really learn how to graft out as a hockey player what it would take to not just be a good player but to be a great player um, and you know even then I haven't reached the dizzy heights of, of Olympian or Olympic level um, but she really gave me the standings to become a good international player. Yeah and that your brother like you can tell you're competitive <laughs> and I know <laughs> that you're competitive so it's great that you know, you had someone there to pull you up that you really want to beat. And I think it's important that, you know, everyone's got a little aspiration how they can push themselves on and maybe compare themselves to someone a little bit, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, I'm going to step away from the hockey a little bit and just speak something different. So, like, what would you do maybe to chill out or unwind, you know, maybe on a rest day? What are those? But, you know, after a game on a Sunday or even during the week, if you have any time to switch off. Um, chill out time. Uh, do you know what though? I, I hate to sit on my backside. So whereas you would love a, a movie marathon, that is like my worst nightmare. <laughs> um, so I'm most likely to go out with the dog, be out in the garden, out for a walk, outside. If the weather's good and I think outside, that's where I want to be. If I can't get outside, then I want to go rock climbing or ice skating or I just want to do something active, something challenging. I think that's where I enjoy to be challenged. Um, but yeah, I'd rather be outside, still moving around, but not all, overexert myself too much. All, all about the challenge and problem solving. So I know that one of your key <laughs> things to do on a hockey trip is um, puzzle books, isn't it? That's like your I have introduced the sport to the puzzle books. They love them. <laughs> um, perfect. And then thinking about back to hockey a little bit. That's a little intro uh, interim. So. Was there a moment that you kind of maybe knew you'd maybe made it or was throughout your career, have you always maybe kept pushing on or, you know, come thinking about maybe selections? Did you always feel confident, comfortable, on edge? How how was that and how, you know, how's that been? Um, I think when I was on the cusp of breaking into the national team, um, I'd had a couple of caps under Keith Joss when he was the coach of the national team. I think I maybe only got one or two. And then I disappeared to New Zealand for the best part of a year and I came back and Gordon Shepherd was the coach of the national team. And I remember the first ever tournament I was selected for, we went to Chile for, um, again, I think it was a World League qualifier. Um, I couldn't believe, one, I was in South America, but I was out ambling around the streets on a day off it was a rest day and I was out with the coaching staff and management and I remember chatting away to Sheffy and he said to me um I think along the lines of you know you're lucky to be here and he was in like and we, we discussed it and, and I had a lot of respect for Sheffy because basically what he was saying was he, he was giving me my chance this is your chance to to really step up and shine and and that really stuck with me and I was so grateful for the opportunity he gave me. And, you know, him just saying that to me made me really want to grab hold of it and not let it go. So I think that was the biggest turning point where I thought, I've got an opportunity here and he believes in me. And so I had to believe in myself and made sure, you know, I, I worked my ass off to make sure I kept that spot. Um, you know, I've played with you for so many years, but even, you know, the most recent Commonwealth Games, you know, we were in the captain's group, but you're still, you never know where you stand at the selection. Um, you always want to be still the best. I think you don't want to ever be complacent because the last thing you want to be is be the weakness of the team. We play a team game and you're only as strong as your weaker players. And you don't want to be that weakness. You want to be a unit. And so I never, ever underestimated selection, never, ever um, took for granted how many caps I had or what experience I had. I just wanted to make sure... I performed for myself and performed most importantly for the team as well. Yeah, just kind of your chat about disappearing. Um, 
I know personally that it was to New Zealand that you kind of disappeared for and then came back. And I've always found that quite, you know, a great life lesson that you can actually go away and have a break as such and do what you need to do for yourself at that time and when it's right for you to then come back. And as you said, you came back, went to the World Cup qualifier. And I think from then on, you've been a kind of member of the senior team ever since. Um, and I know that was a fair few years ago, shall we say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really great life lesson. You know, do, do what's kind of right for you at, at, at those points. Um, and is there anything, it's kind of like a little bit of what's your secret here, Kaz, like one thing you've maybe learned or you do or a mantra, if you like, and um, that's kind of kept you, you mentioned you started playing, you know, kind of, I think it was under 16s, under 18s, just don't want to get that wrong, but is there anything that you kind of live by that's kept you kind of at this top level for all those years? We'll not disclose your age here, so. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think... To, to progress through the age groups, um, I think the, the kind of what the, the principles I kind of stuck to were work hard, work hard and be the hardest working in the team. And that will gain you respect from your teammates, from the coaches and and then hopefully, you know, give you enough. Um, if you work hard on your skills, then they'll be good enough. If you work hard on your fitness, then you'll be the, you know, the fittest, fastest there. Um, and I think hard work is you know, it's never underrated um, and people see it, you know, you can see when somebody really wants something because of the amount of effort and work that they put in. Um, so when I was younger, that's what I always kind of push myself on. I'll do the running sessions, I'll do the hard stuff that nobody wants to do. Um, I used to go down the pitch and just hit balls, hit balls in the corner of the goal, you know, for hours. Not because I found it a chore, I loved it. I wanted to be on the hockey pitch all the time. I would go and toss aerials just for fun. Like, um, you know, that's, you, you've got to do it because you enjoy it. If you see it as a chore, then, then why are you doing it? Do you know? But for me, though, that I loved it because I could see the results. The results were I was one of the best at hitting the balls. I was, you know, that was my go to skill set. Um, so, yeah, when I was younger, hard work was probably my mantra. As I got older, um, I do a lot of chats now to a lot of the younger kids and I think excuses start to creep in as you get a little bit older and um, things get harder because there's more challenges on you. you. You've got university or jobs or, you know, other stresses start to creep in. Even at school, you've got exam stress. You've got um, that always kind of wanting to achieve if you're achieving at sport you're more than likely achieving in academics or other areas as well in your life because you're motivated and you're driven um but don't let that be then excuses to drag you down in any areas um you know if you're if you're wanting to be the best make sure you're the best because you do everything that you can to get there so i think as i got older i started to learn that i i, I had probably an age later on in mid 20s where I found there was a lot of things going on and maybe you get distracted from the hard work kind of focus um, and you start to maybe make excuses. Oh, I didn't do that because oh, I had to get to work and I had a job and I had this and that. And do you know what? It doesn't help you. Nobody wants to hear your excuses and nobody's going to pick you if you're just coming out with excuses. So you've got to regain your focus and, and prioritise what your goals are. So hard, but the best will do it. <laughs> yeah, very tough, but really, really good advice there. Um, and I know, yeah, I know lots of people potentially watching this will have things like that coming up to think about university, you know, moving off to, to work later on in life. So yeah, really good advice. Um, so just to finish up, um, we're going to have a little bit of a quick fire round. So we're going to start pretty easy um, with some questions and it's just kind of quick as you can. So I'm just going to take it away. Um, okay. Ready? Okay, full name. Oh, Karina Kathleen Cuthbert now. Very good. Your position on the pitch? I'm a central defender slash roaming centre forward. Oh, so, uh, number of international goals? Do you know, I actually have no idea. Um, I like to think I've scored a lot. I've definitely hit double figures. I reckon I could maybe be in the 20s. We'll maybe need to check that out for later. Okay, cats or dogs? Dogs. Crisps or chocolate? Crisps. Sun or snow? Oh, sun. Night in or night out? Night out. Box set, binge or movie marathon? Box 
upset. Oh, you didn't want to answer that one. And ketchup no. or mayo? Both together. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. Um, listen, Kaz, thanks very much for your time. Um, it's been great chatting to you. And thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And I hope everyone's surviving in lockdown. Hope to see you all in the hockey pitch soon. Brilliant.